Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Mixed Miles and Mower Man. Hope you're doing well. In today's video, we're going to be looking at a HS81T hedge trimmer, uh, which is coming for repair service. The gentleman that owns a machine is a commercial bloke and it's been said he's been sat in the back of his van, um, hasn't used it for a while and um, it's a non-starter. So he said to me just to put a new carburetor on and go from there rather than mucking about trying to clean one. Uh, it's also going to have a new spark plug as well and new filter and what have you and check the fuel lines all that sort of stuff so pretty much he wants the machine up and running uh, as i say at the moment the machine is not running it won't even run in fire so we'll have a look, look into that very very quickly and then we'll go from there if it's your first time in watching mixed miles and merman then hit your subscribe button and whack the old bell set your notifications to all that way you'll be told one time a video or two of them on my saturday night weekly live stream which starts at 6 30 pm at uk time so without further ado let's get down and dirty and let's try and get this hs 81T to fire up and start rather than uh, just sitting on the bench doing nothing. Right, got it up on the old bench. Uh, let me grab a new carby for it. And then we'll have a look from there. It's in a bit of a sorry state. I hope it has seen better days. I know he did say something about the handles broken here as well. I might have a quick look at that in a bit as well, but no point doing any of that until we know we can get it up and running. So I just want to try and grab. Now, my old mate Conker, he bought me a load of um, uh, bits and pieces for the old... Uh, that's you, that's you. Yeah, it bought some um, some Torx bits for me uh, impact a little while ago, so I'm going to go using them rather than using my uh, my snap on um, doodad. So I'm going to go using that conk, see how that goes, see if that helps us out. Um, so there is fuel in the tank, I believe. Uh, not a lot, though. Um, but he's just said, first of all, it, it just do doesn't start, Mick. And I have tried to pull it and, and it, and it don't want it. Turn it on. Uh, choke is already on choke. Yeah, that's a manual choker. Give it some pumps. Oh, it's got some compression on it, I know that. So, nothing at all coming off of this machine. So, the first thing I want to do is give it a clean, okay, because. Um, I have noticed his machines do suffer with being, with being a bit dirty. There's a little tiny air breather just here. I'll show you in a minute. I might get some more WD-40 in here. Um, half of his stuff he has is just so dirty, dirty Bertie, it doesn't stand half a chance of doing anything. I did his BG-56C uh, the other week. That absolutely filthy, man. Um, as I say, there's a little tiny air breather just here. And if you have a look, let me show you. If you have a look at the air breather, you can see how much gunk is on there. Look at that, look. Yeah, absolutely um, gunked up and not doing anything. And for the sake of just an air compress, um, it, 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 would, it would improve it. But um, that's half the reason why this machine doesn't, doesn't, even, want, doesn't even want to know. So I'll get my air compressor and blow that off. Give that a clean. Everything is just filthy on these, on these machines. So what we're gonna do first, we're gonna remove this pull cord starter just to expose a few bits. Cheers that conk, this is brilliant. That makes it easier. One of them. That should be it, I think. There's no more. One more down there. So this is a commercial grade bit of kit, not like the HS45. This is the 81. Just gonna check condition of pull cord. Yeah, it could do a new pull cord. It's a bit bird right at the very end, right, right at the end of the course. So we'll put a new pull, new pull cord on as well. It does need one of them. It all looks, all looks to be there. Let's take this air filter cover, this carburetor cover off as well. Take that off. 
There's the air filter. Let's remove that. A bit oily. And then as you can see, by the state of this carby, look how dirty that is up in there. Let's see, absolutely filthy. You know, it's a two-stroke machine, and they don't like being dirty birdies. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Um, they, they like to be ni ni nice and clean. So, again, I'm just going to get some spray. Although the carb's coming off, uh, I'm going to put a new carb straight on. I want to uh, just make sure I get rid of most of the dirt that's around this carb, because I don't want to be introducing any more dirt when I go to uh, put the new carb on. So at the moment, the fuel lines, oh, it's just thick with stuff. Uh, at the moment, the fuel lines look, look to be okay. It's absolutely filthy, and I mean smothered. <clears throat> absolutely covered in stuff. I might get a bit of a petrol bath. Get the old paintbrush out and give it a good old petrol bath clean, it does help. Right, so moving on, on a little tiny eight mil socket or nut driver. I'm trying to find my one I've got here, I've got a bit of tape around mine so I know exactly which one it is when it jumps out in front of me in my drawer, but at the moment I'm still um, battling with my toolbox because I've got one more drawer to sort out, but I'm not 100% certain as of yet what to put in this last box, in this drawer whether it be pliers, nut drivers, or what. Uh, so I'm just sort of fighting with myself at the moment. And at the moment I can't even find my nut drivers. I think they're green handles, no, blue handles. There it is, I always put a bit, a bit of earth, earth tape on mine, because it's always eight mils, and a bit of cotton just stuck in the bottom, just so that way you can, um, you can, not, the nut doesn't go on too far. Oh, that's on the tight too. So loosen that one off. Off he comes. I've got one more down here and all. I hope we've got the right carb. There's one nut. My chair's creaking today. Um, yes, I know it's probably straining under the weight before anyone else says it. Little magnet. Go on. There it goes. Right. Got them bits there. Let's get a little tiny Chinese tub. Put all my bits in. I don't want to lose any bits as the air filter as well. We'll go in there together. Uh, so, air box can now be separated away from that. I'll date that on the back of there as well. It's all going to have to go in the petrol buff. And then, um, before you take the carburetor off, just make a note of his, gap, of his, of his pipes and the, uh, the top pipe is on the top, the top of the bung and the bottom part's on the bottom, so we ran the right way. So top to top, bottom to bottom, that makes it easy. And then we've got a little tiny pair of long nose pliers, give these parts a bit of a twist first, backwards and forwards, and then they should just slide off relatively well. And goes one, and give that one a twist as well, it's a slightly thicker one. I don't want to come off. There it goes. So top to top, bottom to bottom, happy with that. That carby can now be removed apart from the throttle lever, which is going to be all the way down the bottom. Push the throttle lever all the way open and then just push that throttle um, cable out of its housing, like so and then that carby will come straight off. Let me get a rag in, because there's lots of dirt down here. As I said, I don't want to be introducing no more dirt onto this machine with a brand spanking new carburetor going on. I'll get two rags in fact, because it is quite a dirty machine. <clears throat> a spare rag over there. Uh, 
that's better. Right, let's get the carby. And it went it went that way. Let's just make sure we've got the right carb. I think I have. We think we have, but we might not have. Now I have noticed some changes on the carbs. So uh, where's my choke little choke lever? There it is. So a little choke lever and go on there. And it comes out sideways. That sits quite proud, that doesn't it? It's got to go all the way down there. Watch me jab myself in the hand with it. That's it, all right. So that works as it should do. I'm happy with that. But notice the difference here on this car. I've got a little, little tiny air breather pipe here. Now I had the same problem on the um, the other one. And if you notice, when this goes on, it's going to go on that way, like so. That little air breather pipe, that's got to sit. Yeah, that's got to come out through here. So you may have to you may have to drill this to make that fit. And I think I'm going to have to literally just just drill this bottom corner out. I have noticed that on quite a few of these new carbs. We've got this, uh, this adaption now. So yeah, I'm going to have to drill just that bottom corner out of there, okay? It's not, it's not going to affect it in any way, shape or form, but I've got to drill a hole in that plate there. I have noticed that on some of these other carbs. Or what I could do is remove that piece and put that onto there. I could also do that. Um, but we'll see how we get on first. So, um, all that's good here, what we're now going to do is just double check these throttles are the same. Same setups, yeah, and it's all good to me, happy with all of that, yeah. So now, we've got a gasket, which might, I didn't have one come of mine. We've got a gasket to put on, and there's a hole just down here. Just there, there's a hole, so you want to make sure that one of those holes goes on. That gasket goes onto there, that sits into there. And that car beat then goes all the way on. And we want top on top, bottom on bottom, as I said before. That onto there. Ooh, that one onto there. Get a pair of pliers and just push them fuel hoses on. And mix up some fresh juice. Dump the fuel out of this and mix up some fresh juice in a minute. To give it half a chance. And now I'll tip the machine up on its side and I want to cook, put this throttle lever over, over and make sure that the throttle lever, go, the throttle cable goes in. Make sure it fits. Now, I've noticed a problem straight away and that is that, that throttle lever doesn't go all the way in. So I'm just checking to make sure it actually backs off all the way, which it doesn't. So that little throttle lever just there, let me show you, doesn't sit all the way in, all the way into that housing. You see? See how it's sitting slightly proud? So what I need to do is get a little tiny drill and just drill that hole out ever so slightly on that, just so this throttle cable sits down flat. Otherwise, it's not going to tick over right. Okay, so I think I've got it set up. Now, we could just remove the other throttle lever from the other car, but in my experience, they're different sizes through the entire length of the entire carburetor itself. So I've got the arm to set up here, it's trapped, it can't go nowhere. So all I'm gonna do is very, very gently, just try and drill this, um, this piece through. Very, very gently. Like that. I'm going to take that back to the bench and try and fit the um, the throttle back into it again. Okay, so we're back on the bench again, and what we're going to now do is uh, fit this new carburetor back on, uh, like so. Uh, top to top, bottom to bottom. Where's that fuel line gone? There it is. On goes the, the bottom one, on goes the top fuel pipe. Push them back on. That's one, two, and so now the fuel pipe, let me get you a bit, get me as close as I can, oh, the throttle cable, sorry, you know, it's very hard to, to do all the close-up shots with you guys in a way. 
So now I draw that, that little tiny piece out. I'm hoping now if I tip the, front, the throttle arm over, I can now get hold of that cable, sit that in, let it go all the way. Yeah, there it goes, it's going. I might turn it around the other way. Bear with and I'll show you in a minute what I've done. Go it went that way. That's it. Right, there you go. So now, let me get you in so you can see. So now you can see the throttle cable and now it goes all the way down flush here, you see. Beforehand, that was sticking out uh, qu quite a way. Um, but now it's sat down completely flush where it needs to be. So that's that bit done. Happy with that, aren't we? Um, so the car is now all on and it, um, it's, on, it's on idle, which is good. And it'll throttle up to maximum. It all works as it should do. So we're happy with that. So the next thing I've got to do is uh, quite simply, uh, that's what I've gone to there. But of course, that little tiny, tiny, tiny air breather pipe's gonna be right in my way. So I've got to make a hole right on that bottom corner. Just about there, it's got to go. So I'm going to have to remove it, this plastic piece, take that out, and then drill a hole all the way through. Because what I'd like it to do is I'd like it just to go through this, this piece here, but not through not through that, that black plastic. That way it can breathe down through here. That's the idea. So I'm just making a, 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 a bit of a leeway for that. It can't be twisted, that's okay. So we're going to put that on. We're going to roughly measure where it needs to be and make a hole to adapt that air breather pipe, which is going to be, oh, it might go through that black bit as well, actually. It's right on that corner. It's been an absolute pig to drill. It's got to go right on that corner just there. So let me get it drilled, and I'll be back to you in two ticks. Okay, so I've now drilled a hole through the bottom side of here uh, to, to, to take this air breather pipe in there. So now, I'm going to offer that on. It wants to be, might want to be a fraction lower. Just a fraction, just to take that in. Oh, that isn't far out, you know, Mick. Yeah, I might, have to I might even have to take this side of this air box off. It's right in the corner. What oh, a shame. Right on that piece there it is. It's not far off. It's about, it's a, just under quarter of a hole out. So yeah, I might just try and cut this section out like so, and then um, that way it sit right in there. Give me two ticks, I'll get that done. Okay, I think I'm there. I've taken a, taken a bit off to cover it, and I've had to literally, it doesn't look pretty, but I've had to slope that into there to get this in. Um, so it doesn't look pretty. I'm assuming you can actually buy the, um, the, the box for it, but now that sits in there, and the carby sits down flush, um, and that can now breathe. So I had to take a bit more off because it, it was blocking the pipe. So it needs to have a breather in there, so you have to uh, learn to adapt and overcome these things, otherwise um, it's never going to work. So hopefully that'll be good. Let me get the carburetor screwed down, quick clean up, and I'll be back. Okay, uh, so that's all done. Carburetor's now screwed down, choke all works as it should do. Uh, next thing to do would be the plug. I'll try and change that over uh, to give it a bit of a happy birthday with a new plug. Uh, probably the smallest one I've got, no doubt. Yeah, that one there. With an extension bar. We've got a new pull cord yet as well. So coming out of the machine is an NGK CMR6H and I've got a free MM CMR6H um, 3365 going back in. So it's exactly the same plug like for like. As these new tiddly little things they do. They are tiny. So we'll put that in. So it's had a new carb, new spark plug, I've got a new pull cord yet. I'm gonna mix some fuel up very quickly. And I'm gonna do the pull cord next as well. Because that pull cord's about due to snap at any point. So that goes on. Let's get the machine out of the way for a minute. And we'll move on to do um, the pull cord change. Uh, let's get some pull cord. What do we want? 
quite thin stuff on there, isn't there? About two mil. I put some. I've got some three. That I do. I've got some two point five. That might be a bit too thin, to be fair. Yeah, two point five is a bit too thin. That's generally for the cheaper home user grade machines. So I've got me lighter ready in my pocket. Where's my lighter? There it is. Get a lighter ready. Pair of snips. That's all you're going to need, really. Pull the old. Um, cord all the way out keep hold of it though don't let go because you get a bit of a surprise when you do so keep hold of it and then with a pair of um forceps or hemostats whatever you want to call them and possibly a pick so hold it down like so just like that keep hold of it bump get your pair of hemostats or picks and then just go in there very very gently and try and pick that knot out now if you can't get it with a with a set of hemostats then what you can do is go over to a set of picks uh, or some, something very very thin i've got a nice little pick here which will be lush just for the job so i'm going to hold that very very still with my hand clamp it don't let go of it get in there with your pick do that a pair of snips that thing comes out now. Now you're sort of left down to one hand, or what you, you can just let go of it. I try to hold it if I can with just one hand. I can then get my cord, get my lighter, burn the end, set lush, and then keep hold of it. Don't let go of that because you'll get a bit of a surprise. You let go of that. Everyone is hoping that I let go of it, aren't they? I know you're all like, Bruce is like, yeah, it's going to happen. And try and thread that through the little tiny hole. It ain't easy. And I was watching, um, what was I watching the other week? Uh, I think it was Simply Small Engines. He was doing a, doing a recall the other week. And he was like, oh yeah, they're easy. Yeah, right over that. I might let go of it. If I can't get it going that old way, I don't think I can. I don't want to get it the other way. It ain't gonna like it. There it goes. That's all a winner. See? All when people say, oh Mick's gonna lose it. No I'm not. No I'm not. One handed knot, see that? One handed knot, you see that? That's a one handed knot there. That's how long I've been in the game. I can do one-handed knots. Pull it tight. And just let that go very, very gently. Keep it the cord down nice and low. Yeah, everyone was hoping I was going to lose that, weren't they? Alright, let's um let's cut a bit off. Let's go to about there, say. I'm going to put that through the hole. Bring that all the way around. Don't let go yet. Very important not to let go just yet. That goes through. And I can pull the cord all the way out. Let it slide all the way in. Now you don't want too much rope on here. Too much rope, it'll come off a spool. Okay, so that's roughly where I'm going to go, which gives me all oh, about a foot and a half of cord. Okay. Now you can use slightly thinner cord, but the problem I have found using a slightly thinner cord is um, it snaps a lot easier, especially for, for commercial guys. It snaps a lot easier. So that should do me. I'm quite happy with that. Not too much. Yeah, about there should be plenty. So I'm, I'm going to come off of that. I'm going to pull that rope out. Where's my old cord gone? There it is, Danny. <clears throat> and now, keep the hold of that pull cord I've got. I'm going to remove that rope out of here. Get my pick. And now I'm going to thread. Thread is thread. Thread that cord. If one person mentions what right said thread. Right. That right into there. There it comes. So now you want to tie your knot roughly. Just so you've got en enough rope on that spool. Which is going to be about there, people. That's where it's going to be. So come back about an inch and a half. 
and I'm going to tie my little knot just there. And I'm using a slightly thicker cord because it is a commercial unit and he's going to be pulling on that all day long. So do the man a favour, if you put a, a thinner pull cord on there, then uh, he'll be coming back for a new pull cord, he'll be very happy. Melt that off, and as you can see, one pull cord fully working. Okay, so that's that bit done. If you're not happy with that, then just put a thinner pull cord on. But, but you know, I, I have noticed that, that that's a three mil, and I've got some 2.5, and 2.5, I'll show you, it just is really, really thin. They might get like a 2.8. You can see the difference in thickness. There is a difference there. Okay, this one is thicker. Okay, um, this one is, is is not it's not brilliant stuff. Although it's Oregon, a uh, good make. It's not good for the, for these sort of trimmers. So I tend to use the uh, the, the free mill, which uh, which does a job. Okay, so happy with that. We can now get the machine back up. Ooh. There she be. Um, Pull cord assembly can go back on. I'll right, give it a quick little spray with some uh, oh, some oil. Where's my oil? There it is. Quick little lube up just to help it. That's it. Happy with that. That can then go back onto there. Yeah, lovely. And then just do up those. Um, then bits and bobs. Just remember, you've got, if you've got any any metal um, screws or metal um, housings, here's a little tip for it. Anything where it's metal, you want the fine threads. Anywhere where it goes into plastic, you want the coarse threads. So this is a fine thread screw going in. Fine thread into there. That's a plastic jobby. Another plastic jobby down there. Another metal one there. Nope, dropped it. Should be one more. One more. Metal one. Into there. So, so far we've done um, new pull cord, new spark plug, new carburetor. I'm going to double check these fuel lines to make sure we're all okay, but we'll also be pulling out the fuel line to put in a, um, a new fuel filter. So, I need my hemostats. And so you're going to grab the fuel filter. There it is. And get hold of it. Not the easiest thing to do. There it is. There. Grab it and then just clamp it off, so it can't go nowhere. Like that. And put a new fuel straight on top of there. In here, I have my box of many things. Have I got a uh, a steel one? An authentic steel one or not? Let's have a little look here. Uh, no authentics there. Uh, nope. I've got a steel jobby. Yep, there's one. New steel one going in. Slightly older version, but it'll do. Take that one off. Put that one on. It's got to be weighted as well. Because um, if it's not weighted, it'll just, it just float. That ain't no good for nothing then. That goes in the bin. Get rid of that. So let me get some fuel mixed up and then I'll uh, meet you outside, we'll go for fire, but I might have to come bring it back in just to do the, uh, the handle fixing a bit, but give us two ticks and I'll be back. So I have had a problem with this, um, with this little machine, it didn't want to prime initially, so what I've done is I've uh, changed the fuel lines around, I think someone's been fiddling. Some of that, some of that. Turn it on. Boom. Right, there you go, all up and running. Now, I just ran the geezer up. Not quite, he's he's 110 percent certain no one's touched that trimmer at all since the last bloke serviced it and he's had it running since then. Now I always, as you saw me in the video, I marked up, you know, top bottom, I knew what, what pipe went where. Um, and that pipe was put on correctly. But the carburetor wouldn't, wouldn't even wouldn't even prime. So uh, I come back off camera and I just changed a few pipes around, pump the bulb, 
and, and it started priming. So it could be that it's a, a copy carburetor and they're set up differently. It could be that, I doubt it. Because um, the return comes out the side of a primer, which is, what, which is what you, where you'd expect it to. So not quite sure, um, but it all runs. It wants a bit more of a tune, definitely, just on, just on, the, uh, on the pickup. It wants a little tiny bit just there. Uh, but what I'm going to do with this machine, I'm now just going to start it and stop it throughout the day, let it go cold overnight, start it tomorrow morning, leave it for two or three hours, come back, start it from cold again, and all that sort of stuff. But it seems to be running absolutely A1, and I've lost one 8mm nut as well. I can't find that, but that'll show up. Um, so I'm 90% convinced we've sorted it. Um, for a machine that wasn't running full stop to now, it, to now it is running, and running quite well, just wants a bit of a tune-up. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure about, about that, those, those fuel hoses. Let me know what you think. Did I make a mistake? Don't think I did. In fact, I'm 100% certain I didn't. So not quite sure there, but just by changing the fuel hoses around, it started to prime. So there you go. So anyway, that's another machine up and running. Just got to finish it off. I've got a new air filter for it and the blades are good. I haven't got to touch that. And then the bloke, I've got to repair the handle as well. Uh, I might do a separate video on that, but we'll see how we get on. And then the bloke can have his machine back uh, at the end of the weekend. So that'd be cool. If it's your first time you're watching Mixed Miles and Mower Man, hit your subscribe button, whack the old bell. Set notifications to all, that way you'll be told one time a video or two on my Saturday Wiki live stream, which starts at 6.30pm UK time. I look forward to the next episode of Mixed Miles very, very soon. But until then, people don't forget, much more importantly, take care easy.